All right, everyone. In this video, we're going to be, you know, picking up where we left off with the Eagle, with the IGBT board. Um, obviously, in the last video, I explained a bunch of stuff. I explained the tools. I explained what we were doing. I had a lengthy introduction before this. I'm going to skip all that. There's not that much to explain other than we're going to be laying out the board. This is a process called floor planning. This is what we're going to be doing. I'm assuming we already have Eagle open and we already have some of the line cooked up, whether it be the, the IGBT stuff we've been doing or whether it's we're doing completely own design and we're just following the tutorial to get an idea of how to use Eagle. Whatever it is, we already have the schematic done. Obviously, it's all right here. We have everything laid out. There's just one thing I have left to do. Um, one final step, which I forgot which I kind of forgot about, and that's invoking the actual power terminals for the buffers. This is exceedingly simple, goes quickly. Um, all you do, I kind of just completely skipped the actual introduction to that. You'll find this button that says invoke, and then I'll say down, down at the bottom right here, to activate another gate from a device, you'll click this and there'll be a section called power. Um, then take that, just bridge it real fast. And in the actual board, I will have added decoupling capacitors. What these do is these help smooth out any possible imperfections in the supplies. But for this board, which is kind of a proof of proof of concept, proof of concept slash tutorial, we're not really needed. In fact, probably on the last video, I'll I'll explain how to do it. But I'm not going to waste your time with it now. So now we're all complete. You'll notice that all the connectors have been wired. Everything has been done. Um, so that being said, let's actually get to it. As you can probably tell, I'm not too good with remembering things to do. Now, on the Eagle top, top bar, you'll notice a bunch of generic things like huge libraries, scripts, ULPs, zoom tools that aren't actually used for designing your board. There's this one button right next to the sheet indicator that says generate slash switch to board. It's right here. Um, now, the process of generating a board, generating a concept board, is as simple as clicking this button. You know, say the board does not exist, create from schematic, and it'll open it up. And then you have whammo. There's your board. Now, there are a few things to note here. The first is that all these yellow lines are called rat nests. Rat nests. These are essentially your prototype wires. Okay, these are where the connections should be. They just have you just haven't placed them yet. Um, rat's nests. This goes back to one of the first problems I said in Eagle is that is that first of all it tends to not do back annotation well so you can't make a change on the schematic. By trying to delete one of these rat's nests, it'll say cannot back in and take this operation. Please do this in the schematic. Um, in a perfect situation, and most likely in other tools such as Altium, you can do both forward and back annotation. You can make a change on the schematic, it'll reflect the board, and you can make a change on the board and it'll reflect the schematic. It'll figure out how to modify the two things. Um, Eagle is a lot less friendly in that respect. So obviously just go ahead and start putting things in place. 
this is the basic idea of floor plan. And notice that if you go view grid, you can change the grid around. So if there's one part you want to get exactly centered, but you can't, you can half the grid. Another thing you can do is you can actually display the grid. The grid will only display if the resolution is such that it permits it. Um, typically with Eagle, the schematic grid is almost always on one tenth of an inch patterns, whereas in the schematic, you can put it to anything. I've used as little as one millimeter grid pitches. Um, this is going to be an issue. I'll address that specifically later. But basically, Eagle was a dumbass when creating the board. And didn't realize that all of these devices are supposed to be the same gate. So up here we have IC5A. This is just the generic. When I first plotted this in the previous video, that's just what it assigned to it. When I cloned it, it cloned the same gate but from a different device. These are supposed to all be the same device. I mean, let me see if Eagle will allow me to modify it. And it won't. So what we're about to do is we're about to do a really happy thing called delete all the parts and replace them. Woo. So now you get a bunch of extra practice with the invoke tool. Basically you just put these in. And what this is going to do is it's going to take what was originally eight eight chips on our board and it's going to change them to two. Notice that I only deleted the last three so we won't have to remap the power at all. We can just get away with having IC5B. And then we can change the part modifier later. So as you see, now it's nice, now it's two. We're good. Now the general rule of thumb that I always use with floor planning is that The general rule of thumb when floor planning is that you want to put devices where you will need minimal routing. Now what that means is that um, is that you don't want to have to stitch vias all the way across the board. You don't want to have to meander them through layers. You want to be able to make the shortest possible point to point connection. And this, that shortest rule you know, the, that minimum distance rule or guideline applies to anything in PCB, um, whether that be whether that be um, power connections, signal connections, you don't want to have very long length wires. 
because long length wires have extra resistance. They have other qualities which are much less desirable. Now, as you can see how I'm floor planning this, a lot of floor planning is kind of guess and check in nature. Um, if you tell 10 engineers to draft the same PCB, they're going to draft it all different ways. Um, the exact methods do not necessarily matter. It's sort of the all road lead to mecca kind of system. But there are definite guidelines you do want to follow. follow. Nope. Now, I mean, on, sim on simple boards, you can kind of get a feel for them in your head. What I mean by that is you can sort of visualize how we're going to lay this out. Even before I had any idea I was going to actually do a video on this, I, I had a concept in my head that I was working with as far as how I would lay the board out, provided I created it. Um, And another general truth of the matter is that simple is better, um, and symmetrical, if possible, is better. So if you're doing two connections of anything, you typically want those to be as symmetric as possible, because well, it makes your life easier for one one thing. The other thing is. It looks nicer and that's one thing you'll realize about me as I do more and more videos is that I get to be a aesthetic Nazi when it comes to board design in fact so it sometimes gets to the point where it actually makes my life harder Now, when working with IGBTs, there is almost one single universal truth. You're going to need heat sinking. Heat sinks are large. No one likes heat sinks, but everyone knows that when you deal with power, you need them. Um, So what you're going to want to do in floor planning this board is you're going to want to make the space between these converters as large as possible. And I just kind of guessed on that one.
you also notice that I tried to do as best of a job as I could to make everything perfectly symmetrical. Um, now, the thing about the board design that we're doing is eventually I'm not eventually, I'm going to actually do it as soon as I finish all these diesel videos, is we're going to be patterning the water block because I don't know what my intentions with this board are yet. Um, it'll also be a good idea as far as multi-paradigm manufacturing, so going from circuit board design to actually designing enclosures and mechanical things that need to interop with the value design. I'm just going to make these point so eighth inch holes. Just smack them around the edges. The exact centers do not make much of a difference at this, this point. So that's what a completely floor, floor plan board looks like. Now, this still looks really rat nesty because of the fact that Eagle only puts a few lines per per device, you know, that didn't come out the right way. Um, so for example, if you have multiple, you know, here's our BCC rail, our motor voltage rail. Um, now, as you can see, I mean, ideally we know that this should go to every voltage connection on the board, but Eagle doesn't see it that way. Eagle sees it as, you know, every one of these lines needs to connect to every other line, but that, but it kind of snakes all the connections between each other. That's why this design looks as ugly as it does. Um, when we start routing the board, which, and routing and placing the board, which is going to be next video, I will explain how to, how simple it is to to get past that. Um, that being said, that's it for this video. Again, much shorter, much sweeter. Um, we'll go from there. All right, guys.